click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, today we will discuss about the effects of set operations that includes all the union intersection difference, the aggregation and also the outer joint relations into our query processing and see the effect of each one that how it cost analysis on the optimized query. Query processing supports all type of join operation, but the set operations are the mainly specified with a set of attribute values that we can calculate. Now there are mainly three set operations that is union, intersection and difference. So first we will talk about these three set operations and then based on these operations we will know that how the outer join and also thus aggregation performs operate on the set bodies to perform the cost analysis on the query processing. So start with the union operation. We know that the union operation is the common one that means we are fetching the common values onto those relations. That means if there is a common value to both the relation R and S, then it will be solve a query onto that union on R and S. Now we need to first build an hash index onto these tuples. So if it is R union S, then we need to first build a hash index on this RI because it is the build input. Now we need to probe into this S input as we need to check that if there is any tuple that belongs to this RI and also in SI, then we will add that result to the hash index. Now we will add every tuple SI to the hash index even only if that is not present in this hash index. So we need to first find the common matches and if there is any common matches then we will not take it and then add all the tuples that belongs to all the relations that is not present in this SI. And now the resulting set we will put to the result. The next is the intersection operation. The intersection says in the query processing that we need to find, take the RI, then all the common one with this SI and also that doesn't belong to RI and we need to put it into this SI on this hash index. So now we will take all the index that is common and also belong to different part on this RI and SI. Now we need to build an in-memory hash index. In-memory means that is already in the memory. We do not need to take it from the disk memory. Now after that the hash index is made, we can add it to SI if it is already present in this hash index. Now the next one is the set difference operation. Now in the set difference operation, we need to put that RI as the build input, hash index will be made on this, and then we take all the values that is in the RI, but not in the SI. That means the remaining one after differentiating from this RI and SI. So first we need to build an index, an in-memory hash index on this RI. Now, if the common one belongs to the hash index, then we need to delete it from the hash index as we only want the differentiated operations. That means the remaining part. Now, the remaining tuple in the hash index that doesn't belong to SI but to RI, we will add it to the result.
So these are the basic operations that we can perform on set and to compute the cost in this hash processing. Now we will talk about the outer joints. We know the outer joint means we need to take all the tuples in all the relations and if there is some matching value then we need to put it into the resultant set. If there is some missing value then we need to put a null against it. Now how to solve a query processing including the set operation and an outer joint. So there are mainly three outer joints that is left outer joint, right outer joint and full outer joint. Now first we will perform the left outer join. So to perform the left outer join, we need to first perform the theta joining on this one, RNS. Next we need to save the relation to a temporary relation Q1. That means we will save it to Q1. Now we need to difference this one because the left outer join means that all the tuples in the left relation will be present there but the tuples on the right relation that has no missing value on this left relation will be put null to it. So first we need to find such values. Now we will perform. So my Q1 has got this theta joining. Now we will perform the projection on this R relation on the theta joint relation and now we are subtracting that from r so we will know all the value that has not matching value from r to s now we will pad all these values to null so now we will have the resultant set that we can add this q1 to result to actually have the result set of the left outer joint operation and this query processing on this left outer join. So in this way we can see that left outer join is much more easier if we can perform all the union and intersection to it. So the theta join that we have already explained in this previous one that how we can do it including the set difference, set union and set intersection operation. Now we will move to the next part that is the right outer join. So the right outer join will be same, just we will start with this R theta joining with S, then we will subtract S from this theta join that we have saved in this Q1 relation. Now for this full relation, so we can say that R theta joining S on this left basis is always equals to S right theta joining r so if we just change the positions of this two then it will be changed because the s is now on having this r1 and r is now is having this s1 so the left outer joint becomes the right outer joint if we just position changes on s and r now to perform the full outer joint So the full outer join we can perform by having first computing this theta join on S. Then we can have first computing the R minus this Q1 and then also S minus this Q1 to have our result. So finally we will add all the tuples to the result so we can have the padding null values to the R. Also the null values that doesn't belong to R but with the S. So you can this way compute each of these outer joints and have their query processing as a result of the set operations. Now what happens if we perform the aggregation operations on this set bodies? Now let us look at this query. Now this query will give us the department-wise average salary. Now we are using the aggregate function average salary here. And we are grouped it by the department name. So now we have a set of parties that is the department name. So we are naming with and we are taking only the intersection that means the common and unique name we will take only once. So the set operation here we have done that the intersection. 
Now that the average one depending on this group by, that means first we need to find the intersection one. So the cost will be much, much lesser because we are taking only the common value once. So we can have this aggregate function average performed on this group wise. That means the average of each of these calculations will be now grouped in down in the intersecting part. So if it is on this R relation that the instructor being the R relation, so we have BR number of blocks that to transfer these blocks to the main memory. And there will be two into BR number of six because we need double that is disk to memory and memory to disk for the seeking of this query because if the R is a build input and is in the disk memory. Now, if it belongs to S, then we can say that there will be BS number of block transfer, but BS by two number of six because the in memory has already this BS. And we know in the intersection and difference part, we have built an in memory hash index on this RI. So in this way, we can calculate all the operations and aggregation like sum, mean, max, count, and all it will be suggested that the group by and this order by clause will help us to make the set operations perform on this query and then have the result in an optimized way. So that is all for today. Thank you for watching it. Stay tuned with Ikira and subscribe to Ikira.